this is the assassin stream this is going to be a, the assassin videos will be up on youtube very shortly after the stream hopefully uh and this is not only how to play assassins but also how to play against them uh, this video is going to focus not only on the beginner aspect of things, how to get introduced into Assassins, but it should also be really useful for the more advanced players. I'm going to be covering things specifically that I didn't know, or things that I think a lot of the League community doesn't know about these champions. Uh, we'll be going over every single champion in detail, going over their abilities, all that stuff. Um, we've got information on how they do in pro play how they do in solo queue we'll be talking a little bit about their lore for each one of the champions we'll be talking about their power spikes uh what's their common runes and build paths all of that stuff uh we won't go into a lot of like really in-depth like combos or things like that there are plenty of great players out there who have very detailed combo guides and i definitely want to point you towards those people because they are far better at those champions than i am i'm going to focus on things more from an analytical perspective and from a um, numbers perspective and also from a details perspective so you guys can learn the details about these champions that a lot of people don't know so first up we're going to talk about the evasion assassin so the evasion assassins I'm going to be calling Akali, Fizz, and Zed. So next evasion assassin will be Fizz, also known as the title trickster. So Fizz was released in 2011. He had a minor rework in 2016. He was so overpowered in season six. Uh, it was just ridiculous. Uh, he, tank Fizz was just, uh, it was awful. Uh, tank items in top lane and he just was it seemed like there was no weakness to him so a lot of items got changed because of because of tank fizz top lane and obviously fizz got some nerfs as well Fizz has seen a very little pro play in seasons eight and nine but he has a really high win rate in solo queue and also a decent play rate in solo queue and i feel like fizz is actually actually a really good assassin for people to pick up because he's got decent complexity um, and his skill ceiling isn't too intimidating. Um, some assassins, it can feel really intimidating to pick them up, but Fizz, it's generally, it feels pretty easy to pick him up, but he's pretty hard to master. So as far as the lore is concerned, uh, Fizz is an aquatic yordle. Yeah, I didn't know that. I actually uh, thought he was uh, Vestaya, but he, he is defined as an aquatic yordle in the lore. Uh, it says that he's the only surviving member of a lost aquatic civilization. He currently resides near Bilgewater, uh, and he's considered to be good-natured but mischievous. Uh, a lot of times he'll do things without fully understanding the consequences, like uh, there's a story about Fizz sinking a ship because he took the coin that was supposed to be used for safe passage as a tribute to Naga Kaboras. He took that coin, so Naga Kaboras didn't get it, and the, as a result, the ship was sunk and only like there was only one survivor. But there's some pretty cool stories about Fizz. Uh, a lot of people consider him to be like an evil spirit and things like that. Uh, but some people consider him to be more good-natured and mischievous. So in general, Fizz is kind of uh, weak in the early game. First couple levels, he doesn't, he can't really do that much. But once he hits around level four, that's when he starts to get his kill threat. Um, he's very reliant upon his E. You have to play around that E cooldown. Uh, a lot because his E cooldown is not only a great form of engage, it's also a great form of escape and a great ability to basically dodge crowd control and dodge ganks and things like that. Where Fizz is really strong is mid game. He's just absolutely terrifying in the mid game. Uh, the ultimate that he has deals insane damage from max range. So if he casts his ultimate from Fog of War so the enemy can't see it coming, he can just wipe people off the map with that ultimate. Uh, combined with the rest of his damage. So, Fizz's passive is called Nimble Fighter. Uh, it makes Fizz permanently ghosted, which means that he doesn't get minion blocked or anything like that, uh, and it gives him damage reduction that scales with AP. So it makes Fizz kind of a little bit innately tanky uh, compared to a lot of other champions. So the, uh, the damage reduction he gets, he gains 4 plus 1% of his AP reduced pre-mitigation damage from each tick of damage that he has. So that's how his damage reduction works. Uh, it maxes out at 50% damage reduction. So his Q is called Urchin Strike. Uh, it's a dash 
uh, that's about 550 range. It's a fixed distance dash, so he always dashes that 550 range. Uh, he can dash through minions to reach enemy champions. Uh, the dash does apply on hit effects. It can be used as both an engage or a disengage. Um, there isn't that much to Fizz's Q that's uh, not unknown. The only thing is that it does apply those on hit effects. Uh, a lot of people don't know that, uh, but really it's kind of a pretty straightforward ability. It's just a fixed range dash of 550 units and it can be used on pretty much anything. So a lot of times people don't realize that he can just dash with the minion onto a champion as well. This is W is Seastone Trident. So this is an ability that a lot of people don't understand. Um, so the first thing is that there is an, a path component and an active component. Um, when you use the active component, it is an auto attack reset. And if it kills a target, well, the active component kills a target, it reduces the cooldown to one second and it refunds the mana. So it's great for like last hitting. Um, if it doesn't kill the target, it grants a bonus on hit damage for five seconds. It's an essential tool for CSing and trading. Uh, additionally, passively, uh, it also makes it so that his abilities do on hit damage. Um, every it's like a like a damage over time ability is for his uh, passive damage so it's kind of a really complicated ability typically what you want to do with it is you can use an auto uh, w so you basically auto and then w because it resets the attack auto set uh reset and that allows him to proc electroshoot really quickly so you can like q auto w and that instantly procs the uh electrocute so it's really good for trading it's really good for last hitting minions uh, because he gets that, that reduced cooldown and the refund on the mana. And it makes it so that he doesn't have that much mana issues in lane. Okay, next. This is his big ability, his E, Playful Trickster. This is the huge one that you have to play around a lot. It's a, it's a long cooldown, uh, but it grants untargetability. So the way it works is he vaults to a location, becoming untargetable uh, for up to 0.75 seconds. And then he will crash down... Uh, with his trident deal aoe damage and it also slows so it's got a lot it's got two parts to it it gets has the target ability part and then also has the damage part he can also use it to leap over walls um and one really cool thing you can do with it is that you can actually leap over the wall the wall with the first part of it place a ward and then hop back over the wall so you can use it to check baron you can use it to check drake uh, it's really useful to kind of check those spots where your team doesn't have vision. It can also be combined with flash. So you can extend the range of it with flash and it can kind of surprise people, catch people off guard if you're going for one of those all-ins. Obviously, because it makes him untargetable, it's really great for being able to dodge uh, crowd control. So if you're playing against like a Syndra or an Ari, he can use his E to basically negate the charm or the stun. Uh, he can use it to negate just a lot of really uh, a lot of abilities because of the untarget ability. So you really need to play around this ability if you're going to play Fizz. The cooldown is really long. It's 16 seconds at uh, rank one, drops to 10 seconds at rank five, uh, and basically anytime Fizz has his E up, you have to play much safer around him. You can't. You have to be very careful. You want to try and bait out that E as much as possible, and then punish him when it's on cooldown. So Fizz's ultimate, Chum the Waters. So it deals increased damage and has a larger AoE the longer it travels. So it's very long ranged. Um, so he basically throws out a lure uh, in the direction. The range is up to 1300, which is ridiculously long. Um, and the longer it travels, when it actually hits a target, it creates a larger fish that will basically come up and eat them. Uh, so you have three different tiers of damage. You've got the Guppy, the Chomper, and the Gigalodon. Uh, you definitely want to be trying to get the Gigalodon damage because uh, it scales with 120% of his AP if he reaches that the highest AoE threshold. So uh, when the shark comes up, it knocks up the target it is attached to, and it knocks aside everyone else. So it's great for isolating a target. It knocks away the rest of the that... Um, the rest of the allies of that champion uh, and it's best used from fog of war so if you can deny vision use sweeper things like that deny vision throw it from fog of war even if it hits someone that's um you know a little bit more tanky it's great to kind of isolate a target from the rest of their team it'll do damage aoe damage to pretty much everyone and it's great for assassinating targets 
So as far as the skill order, you definitely want to be maxing your R whenever you get the chance. First thing you want to max is E because you get that uh, increased cooldown and increased damage, then W, then Q. Uh, w gives you a lot of the uh, on hit damage and things like that. Electrocute is pretty much the only keystone you're going to run on Fizz. I mean, if you want to go for memes, you can go for Dark Harvest or something. But in general, uh, Electrocute is the way to go on Fizz. Typically, you're going to run Flash and Ignite. You can situationally use Teleport if you want to. Uh, it may be more useful to run Teleport if you're running like a five man. But Ignite typically is what you're going to go for in solo queue. Hex Tech Proto Belt is almost always a first item. It increases his wave clear. It increases his engage range. It just makes it a lot easier for Fizz to get his combos off. And it also adds a little bit more burst damage to his combo. Lich Bane and Zonyas are almost always the next two items he goes for. After that, uh, Lich Bane gives him more on hit damage. Zonyas also gives him that additional stasis effect that makes him a way slipperier, slipperier than he already is with his E and his Q. Uh, and then typically after that, he builds full damage or he'll build magic penetration if people start building uh, magic resist. All right, guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. If you feel like there's something that I missed that was essential with regards to Fizz, please leave a comment below. All I ask is you be respectful. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium signing off.